Hello and welcome. It's Vicky Midwood here, your host on Raw Chatter. I am so delighted that you have decided to join me again. So we are heading into the end of another month. And as promised last week, I am going to share with you uh, my thoughts on radical honesty and why it is so it's so important, especially if we want to communicate well and clearly, if we want to avoid holding grudges, misunderstandings, and actually like ourselves a little bit more than perhaps we do now. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Vicky Midwood, the addiction eliminator. That means I don't eliminate your addiction. I eliminate the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions and the behavior patterns that you feel are creating problems in your health, in your relationships and in your altogether enjoyment of life. And I do that based upon principles, science facts, not pseudoscience fiction, and also my own life experience with alcohol and food, body image and exercise issues. And today we're talking about radical honesty and it's such an important subject. Last week I was sharing about bearing a grudge and just really doing that because we have poor communication skills and that communication skills are not something that is taught to us. Um, we pick it up. We pick it up from being very, very tiny. And if the people around us are not really skilled at communicating, then it kind of follows suit that we're not brilliant either. Which is why if you can work in an environment or have a mentor and, and listen to somebody who has got excellent communication skills and kind of copy and follow what they do, it makes a massive difference to your job prospects, to how you conduct yourself around others, and crucially, and most importantly from where I'm coming from, how you feel about yourself. Because one thing that we all need to understand is that we all lie, right? Everybody lies. If you are a parent and if you are a, a child of parents, and let's face it, we all are, whether we've brought up with them or not, but our caregivers, you will know that they have lied to you when you were little, possibly to get you to do something. And you will have lied as well, usually to get you out of getting into trouble or to cover up and prevent somebody else from getting into trouble. We see it everywhere. It, politicians do it all of the time. Uh, there's a lovely phrase, isn't it, that people use, economical with the truth. It's just a clever, fancy way of saying I'm lying, right? By omitting something, it is the equivalent of you not telling the truth. And by definition, a lie is not telling the truth. So why is it important? And why is it really important in getting rid of the emotional anguish, shame, guilt, and anxiety that happens if we are not liking the person that we are, how we look, and how it makes us feel? Well, here's why. Because if we're good at lying to other people, we're usually pretty good at lying to ourselves. And if we do have an obsession or a compulsion to use substances, or if we have a behavior, so I'm talking about food or alcohol, but it could be drugs, it could be prescription medication, it could be shopping, it could be gambling. And we are trying to hide it from other people. Then chances are that we tell little white lies. And somehow when we call it a little white lie, it doesn't seem, does it, as big and as naughty or bad, or um, we don't beat ourselves up as much about it if we think that it's just a harmless, in inverted commas, little white lie. But the problem is with little white lies, especially if you are trying to cover up an obsession or addictive behaviors, thought patterns and feelings, it becomes habitual. And once something has become habituated, then it becomes very difficult for us to recognize when we are doing it. And this is what often happens with people who are addicted, particularly to substances. Right, we tend to cover up and we tend to lie. And one lie 
leads to another. So whether it's hiding alcohol or hiding food or food wrappers, whether it is pretending that you have already eaten and telling your family or your friends that you're telling your friend who you're going to meet that you ate at home and you're telling people at home that you're going to eat when you go to your friends, it's all lies. And it's lies at the time that we don't think are that harmful. But when we start to do them automatically, and when we start to lie about stuff that actually isn't significant and isn't important, but we do in it anyway, that's when we can really get ourselves into a right old pickle. Because the problem with lying is the more you do it, the more habituated it gets, the harder it is to remember which lie you told about what to which person. And if you are lying and telling slightly different lies to multiple people and those people happen to be communicating with each other, then you are going to get found out eventually. And then what often happens is we lie about lying, right? And then we're really getting ourselves into a big old pickle. And how do I know? Well, because I've done it right? I've done it. And anybody who is listening, who is familiar with that pattern, you will know that it feels shit, right? You don't feel good about it because the honest truth is you do know that you're doing it. It's just that we don't want to admit it to ourselves because we don't really know how to stop it because maybe it has become habitual. We're not even aware every single time we're doing it. We're only aware sometimes. But also, We're trying to convince ourselves that maybe it could be true. Maybe it could be true. And perhaps if I say it enough times, then it will be true. And this is how we convince ourselves and how fiction becomes facts. Now, we see a lot, don't we? In fact, we're brought up with it in social media, in the media in general. They keep repeating the same stuff that isn't true, that's based on science fiction, and pseudoscience when it comes to nutrition and and particularly when we're talking about advertising products. And we keep hearing the same lies and they are lies. Call it marketing, it's still lies, right? You are going to believe that it is actually true. And this is where we can get very confused between well, what actually is a lie and what is the truth. And those lies, those lines do often get really, really blurred. But what I'm going to invite you to ask yourself is, do I actually really know when I am telling a lie? And the chances are that you do. And I want you to get honest with yourself and ask yourself, how does it feel? This not in a kind of I'm going to beat myself up and I'm a terrible person and I'm the devil incarnate kind of way, but just kind of let's get honest because radical honesty begins with being honest to yourself. And this is where kind of the 12-step programs are are quite good in that they talk about this stuff. Because one of the steps is that we admitted to ourselves that there was a problem, right? It then talks about admitting it to somebody else, but it first talks about admitting it to ourselves. And that, for me, definitely, and for a lot of the clients that I speak with, that is the biggest thing that holds us back from getting any help in the first place, is admitting to ourselves, honestly and fully, that we have a problem and it's now out of our control. If you are struggling with any kind of issue, an addictive habit or obsessional habit, then the chances are that deep down, deep, deep down, you know that it's a problem but you are convincing yourself that you've got it under control. And you try the next new thing, and this time it's going to work. And and actually, do you know what? If I just cut back on my drinking, everything will be okay. If I just stop monitoring every single mouthful that I eat, I'll be less obsessed with my weight. If I just do this, if I just do that, and these are the things that we convince ourselves, if we do them, everything's going to be okay. But the truth is, that we're not sure that it will be. The truth is that oftentimes we don't actually do the thing that we say we're going to do. Or maybe we do it once 
and it feels so uncomfortable that we don't want to do it again. And so guess what? The easiest option is to keep on with the lie. We keep on convincing ourselves that actually, do you know what? We've got this. We're, it's all going to be okay. And we are in control. When the honest, radical, honest truth is you don't feel in control. And actually, it's starting to take over your whole life and you're not enjoying it. What I want to kind of really home in on is that uh, most of us are scared of being honest, particularly with other people, because we're frightened of how it's going to be received. We're frightened of the repercussions. We're scared of hurting somebody's feelings if we tell them the truth. And this is something that I've shared a number of times and I want to share again. And, and if you haven't listened to my masterclass, which is free, by the way, Nourish Not Punish, and you can grab that on my website on the Get Started page and on the pop up at the moment. I talk about the ways that we punish ourselves without realizing that we're punishing ourselves. And one of the ways that we do it is trying to be perfect and trying to be perfect in the eyes of other people and in the eyes of ourselves. And oftentimes that means that we're so concerned about not making people feel upset. We've got this idea and it's homed in on us from being tiny, tiny little kids that you mustn't say that to so-and-so because you might upset him. Oh, no, you can't do that because you might hurt their feelings. In other words, we're given this idea, and it is an idea, it's not the truth, that we have the power to control other people's emotions. And we believe it. And it's a lie. It's one of the earliest lies that we're told, right? There may be a behavior that we do that might elicit a feeling in somebody, Right? But they have a choice as to whether they want to run with that feeling and let it take over or whether they just want to notice it for what it is, which is just a feeling. And all a feeling is, is an emotion in motion. In other words, that feeling will pass. But if we latch onto it and grip onto it, then that feeling can become massive and we can then bring in all kinds of interpretations and perceptions about what that person meant by what they said and all of this kind of stuff. And this is where last week I was talking about grudges. This is how we can kind of form grudges in our mind based upon nothing. It's not based upon the truth. It's based upon stuff that you're telling yourself in your own head about what you think might be going on. Radical honesty requires you to not do any of that stuff. Radical honesty means that you tell the truth, no matter what the consequences. And if it makes somebody feel uncomfortable, well, then so be it. That person feels uncomfortable. It's not up to you to make them not feel uncomfortable. However, does that mean that there are ways of being radically honest? Yes, of course. We don't want to be rude and we don't want to be blunt. We need to ask ourselves, how would I like to receive the truth? How would I like to be told something that perhaps I might not want to hear? Because if we can put ourselves in the shoes of the other person who's going to be on the receiving end of our truth, it's much easier for us to work out perhaps the tone of voice that we're going to use, how we're going to bring it up, is it just going to be very, very kind of conversational and, hey, by the way, or are you going to really make a big hoo-ha out of it and sit down and say, I need to chat to you about this because blah, blah, blah. There are ways and ways, and this is why I said in last week's episode, and I'm saying it again now, communication is a skill and it's not something that people are taught. It is something that I teach the people who work with me. It's one of the most important things. Language and communication skills are crucial when it comes to letting go of any obsession or habit that no longer serves us. And our interpretation and the words that we use is so, so important. But I want you to think about the words that you are using when you're lying to yourself. You know, oftentimes we are kidding ourselves that it's okay because it's not harming anybody. But it is. It's going to be harming you because you're not going to be being true to yourself. And you're going to be blurring your own lines of what is the truth and what is not. And that makes it really hard for you to put in boundaries. And boundaries and radical honesty are two things that go together. And boundaries is one of the big B's uh, that I cover with people in my blast method. So 
I work with people on three main principles, which is that you need to be aware. You need to be aware of what you are doing and why you are doing it, right? And those principles are the overriding umbrella, if you like, for my BLAST method to fabulous freedom. And the B stands for multiple things. There are multiple Bs in the BLAST method, but one of those Bs is boundaries. And it's it's top, right? It's top of the list in terms of language skills because our boundaries are you being able to clearly communicate what is acceptable to you and what is not. Our boundaries are the things that we put in place for ourselves and for other people. And our boundaries are based upon our values. And if you value honesty, but you're going around telling yourself little white lies or telling other people lies because you don't want to hurt their feelings, then you're out of alignment with that value. And it's no wonder that you don't feel good. It's no wonder that you feel anxious or guilty or ashamed because when we're out of alignment with our true values, we can't feel complete, contented. We can't feel serene and happy being us because we're just out of kilter. And you know it, maybe subconsciously, and this is often why then we turn to food or to drink to help ourselves to forget the lie that we told or to kind of diminish it and convince ourselves it's not really that important and they won't know or it won't really make that much difference. But the truth is, if you can be radically honest with yourself and with other people, communication for one gets so much easier putting boundaries in place and keeping them in place also gets easier and a lot of the time with a little bit of space perhaps sometimes people appreciate honesty I for one recognized that really I was lying to help myself to feel better about myself it was about feeding my ego and trying to convince myself that I was in control, that I was a nice person, that everything was okay. And the reality was, it just wasn't true. When I started to get honest, it was so much easier to ask for help. When I started to get honest, I could build trust. I could build trust with other people. When I started to get honest and show my vulnerability and say, hey, do you know what? I am a human being and I'm struggling with this and I don't know how to do it, even though I might in the past have told you that I did. Actually, I don't and I need some help. Instead of it making me feel weak and not good enough, it actually helped me to start to learn to understand who I genuinely was and what my needs and what my wants were. When it comes to being radically honest, it actually is so, so freeing. And it starts with you. Start being radically honest with yourself. So here's a little exercise that you might want to try. Grab a piece of paper and write down all of the lies that you told today and yesterday, just those two days, and see how many you come up with. And then have a look at them and get honest and say, what, what was the reason that you told yourself for telling that lie? Was it for yourself to make yourself feel better or was it to save the other person from feeling a certain way? And then look at how is this helpful to you or to the other person? Because if we keep lying to somebody, we're actually not being helpful to them. We're not being a friend. If somebody says they look, you know, how do I look in this? And, and you lie because you don't want to hurt their feelings, but they go out and everybody's staring at them because, you know, I'm using an obvious one, but because, you know, they've, they've got the zippers open at the back and, and they can't do up or something. Everybody's going to notice, right? And yet you, supposedly their friend, didn't tell them because you wanted to save their feelings. But you didn't, did you? You actually made the situation worse. So ask yourself that question, yeah? Who is it benefiting? Because the truth is, oftentimes, it's not actually benefiting anybody long term. And then what I'm going to invite you to do is not criticize yourself, but make a decision and just say, OK, I'm going to try this little experiment. And that's it. Just get curious. Right. Just try to go for 24 hours tomorrow without telling a lie. 
It doesn't mean you're going to be rude to people. It doesn't mean that you're going to be obnoxious or you're going to go out of your way to tell people what you think. Because remember, nobody wants your opinion, right? If you just decide to blurt it out. The only time you give anybody your opinion is when you are asked for it. So you're not going to be going around being radically honest and telling people what you think about X, Y, and Z. But when you are telling yourself a story that you've told yourself a million times, perhaps as an excuse to keep on doing the behavior that you're doing, just stop and ask yourself the question, is this the truth or is it a lie? Is it helpful or is it actually long-term going to be really detrimental to me becoming the person that I want to be, living the life that I want to live? So I hope that you are going to take me up on that challenge and do that little experiment. And if you do, I'd love you to pop back in here and leave some comments or even better, connect with me on uh, social media or send me an email, vicky at vickymidwood.com. And if you haven't done already and you are now becoming a regular listener, I would love you to hit that subscribe button because the more people that subscribe, the more we can get the message out to those people who need to hear it. Because if you are struggling with food or alcohol or anxiety or body image or exercise issues or any of the health issues that go along with having obsessive compulsive thinking and behaviors around those things, I need you to know you're not broken and you don't need fixing. That you maybe just do need a little bit of support and a little bit of help to help you to start to reconnect back to your body. We only have one life as far as we know. And we only have one body. Look after it. It is looking after you. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening.